Craig Hartman with VFDs.com. Today we're going to talk about how to specify and evaluate a medium voltage drive. Now by drive we mean a variable frequency drive used to change the speed of a motor. And what is medium voltage? Medium voltage basically means that the motor is over 1000 volts. So typical medium voltage drives are 2300, 3300, 4160, 6600, and 11 kV. Here's a timeline of drive development. In my opinion, the 480 volt drive first became reliable in about 1988 with the introduction of the low voltage IGBT. Medium voltage drives have taken longer and underwent considerable development during the 1990s and in the first decade of the 21st century. This is the most common device used in a medium voltage drive. It's called a medium voltage IGBT and it is the standard building block of today's modern drives. This is another device that's basically used only in drives probably 10,000 horsepower or higher, but it's an amazing device you can see barely bigger than a calculator that can withstand 4,500 volts and 4,000 amps. Here we have a medium voltage drive. And so you can see the typical parts of a medium voltage drive. We've got the incoming switches and contactors. Then you go to the isolation transformer. We've got the converter, the inverter, and finally the controls. So let's talk about the top 10 things that you need to consider in specifying and evaluating a variable frequency drive. First of all, what is the application? That means what is the motor driving? Here are some pictures. Here's a mine hoist. Here's a grinding or ball mill. Here's another picture of a shovel or a dragline excavator. How about an overland conveyor? Or maybe material handling. The most difficult applications are things like fully integrated steel mill drives. Each of those is going to require different types of drives that can handle that particular application and different types of engineering experience. So the first thing to do is learn everything about your application that you can. Find out how fast does the response need to be? Do you need regeneration? What is the motor nameplate? What type of materials are going to be present? And what type of special considerations need to be given to that particular application? Item number two has to do with voltage. In general, the most common voltage to use on the input of a drive is whatever you happen to have. You use the voltage that is in your distribution system. Remember that the voltage on the input of a drive does not need to be the same as the voltage on the output of the drive. So the input of the drive will be determined on the, motor vol on the voltage of your distribution system, and typically that might be 12 kV. The motor voltage is completely different. That may de be determined by what motors you have in stock, it may de be determined by the type of motor you intend to use, or it may very well be determined by the selection of the drive that you wish to use. Evaluation point number three has to do with an isolation transformer. Now some manufacturers try to leave out the isolation transformer in an attempt to reduce cost. Uh, we have had bad experience with drives without isolation transformers and motor failures due to that fact. An isolation transformer will separate the grounds on your motor from the distribution system and it will protect both the motor and the drive from transients and other harmful voltages. The isolation transformer may be necessary if you have a multipulse drive and an isolation transformer allows you to come into the drive at whatever your high voltage distribution system is and then step down through the drive to whatever the motor voltage is. We recommend that you always include an isolation transformer in your drive. Point number four is power quality. When I talk about power quality, I'm talking about the power quality of the utility supplying your system. All variable frequency drives pollute the power system. And that pollution can be either a big problem or a small problem. Power quality needs to be specified in two forms. Number one is the power factor, and in this video by power factor I mean displacement power factor. Make sure that your displacement power factor is over 95%. Otherwise, you may have problems with the utility and you're going to get excessive voltage drop and possibly power factor penalties. The second point is the harmonics. Now harmonics has to do with the power system pollution. 
The standard for harmonics is IEEE 519, and the most stringent area of IEEE 519 has, specifies a total harmonic current distortion of 5%. Make sure that your variable frequency drive does not exceed 5% total harmonic current distortion at any point during the operating curve in which you expect to operate your loads. In other words, basically at any speed that you intend to run the drive. Now, be careful with current source inverters. They can have terrible harmonics and need filters. So we would recommend a voltage source inverter. And we would recommend either a multi-pulse technology, uh, which is 24 pulse or higher. 18 pulse is marginal. Under, under, under 18 pulse is not acceptable. So go with a 24 pulse or higher if using a multi-pulse technology, or specify an active front end on your variable frequency drive. Point number five has to do with the waveform to the motor. This is similar to power quality, only we're talking about the motor rather than the utility. One thing to watch out for is if your variable frequency drive has extensive filtering on either the input of the drive or the output of the drive, you can be assured that you've got a drive that's producing poor power quality and they're putting in filters to compensate for a drive that has poor characteristics. So we recommend get a drive that has good characteristics and doesn't require filtering. When we look at the motor, we want to look at how many steps are to the motor. So looking at this drawing on the left, you can see that this is a two-step waveform. In other words, there is two steps between zero and peak. Or, if you count from peak to peak, there are three steps. Positive peak, zero, and the negative peak. This is the way basically all low voltage drive functions. When you get to a medium voltage drive, you can increase the number of steps. If we look at the middle diagram, this is what we call a 3-5 step waveform. Three steps from zero to positive peak, or five steps from positive peak to negative peak. Because of this, the motor is only seeing smaller steps, the waveform is improved, and it's easier on the motor insulation. Looking at the Figure on the right, this is a 5 slash 9 waveform, a much better waveform now in which you actually have 9 steps from peak to peak. The waveform is better, it's better on the motor insulation. This may make a big difference in the type of insulation you have in the motor and will certainly increase the lifespan of the motor. Here is a drive that actually has 23 steps, so it is possible to get drives with a very large number of steps. If we look at this waveform, you can see that drives with large numbers of steps are going to have a very good waveform, going to be very good for the motor, and you're not going to have the voltage stresses on the motor that you get with waveforms with low numbers of steps. Number six has to do with the manufacturer. Ask yourself, how long has this manufacturer been manufacturing medium voltage variable frequency drives? A lot of manufacturers these days think, oh, I need a, man a medium voltage variable frequency drive to fill out my product line. And so they add that in there so that they can have that for people that are willing to buy that from them. If your manufacturer has one medium voltage drive to sell, they probably fit in that uh, situation. You should buy from a manufacturer who has a multitude of drives to sell, tailor-made to different applications. Ask yourself how much installed base is there in your area or in a similar application. Take a look at experience. Experience makes a world of difference. Experienced manufacturers know what works and what doesn't, and they'll provide a solution that will work the first time. They'll provide an active timeline for installation and commissioning, and they understand the do's and don'ts of setup and operation. In any application, there are those little boogeymen that you look for that uh, can cause real problems with your project. So having a manufacturer who has done many applications similar to yours and has specialists who understand your application will enable you to not fall into those traps. Ask yourself, what is their breadth of product? If that manufacturer has one drive, then they probably are a me too type of company. Some manufacturers have a dozen or more drives tailored to specific applications and specific requirements. And will this company be in business 20 years from now? Not only that, but will the, they be supporting your specific drive 20 years from now?
Now point number seven has to do with conservative design. I almost left this out, but this is an important point. Just as a simplistic uh, example, suppose you have a 100 horsepower drive, or a 100 amp drive, I should say, and you have 100 amp transistors. Not very conservative. But if you have a 100 amp drive and you're using 110 amp transistors, that's a little more conservative. 120 or 150 would be more conservative yet. These types of things apply to transistors, diodes, conductors, capacitors, heat sinks, and all sorts of things. If you have a manufacturer that's supplying drives who are in really tough applications that require high reliability and are subject to frequent overloads, then uh, you probably have a manufacturer who has had to design their drive to be very reliable in difficult applications. And now we get to number eight. Number eight has to do with reliability in general, and that starts, of course, with conservative design. However, it goes far beyond that. Number one, all drives are not the same. All manufacturers will tell you that they have the very most important and reliable drive, but these are not the same. And by asking around, you can many times find out those manufacturers that have a reputation for high quality in difficult applications. Don't be fooled by people who say that we have N plus one. That means that they put more transistors or more diodes or whatever in the drive. In case one fails, then it can continue to operate. In most cases, this will not allow your drive to continue to operate. You're better off getting a drive that is not going to have those failures simply by designing conservatively. And you can have drives that will have much better than a decade of mean time between failure. So N plus one tends to be a band-aid that you're better off without. Talk to other owners in your business area. Find out what their experience is and has that drive been reliable. And look at product life support. That manufacturer will need to be in business and will need to be selling your drive and supporting your drive at least 10 years after that drive is obsoleted and they stop selling that drive. And a drive should easily be good for 20 to 30 years in service. Um, does the manufacturer have the ability to support drives in mission critical applications? Mission critical, such as a steel mill, they have to be up, or a paper mill, or a drilling rig. And if they're in these mission critical, difficult applications where that drive has to be on and have to run, that's the type of manufacturer that you're looking for and the type of reliability that you're looking for. Point nine is engineering support. Every medium voltage drive is going to be custom designed for your application. Where is that going to be done? Is it going to be done in your country? Is it going to be done overseas? And who is going to do that? Is this a company who has two or three designers that are going to take the one drive that they have and apply it to your application? Or is it a company who has a number of application engineers specialized in different areas such as mining and hoists and test stands who can actually have the experience and knowledge for having done your application multiple times? If you get into issues and you need engineering support in the field, are they going to have to fly somebody across the ocean? Or are those engineers right there close to your facility and in your country? And now we come to the last point, point number 10, possibly the most important point of the entire series. The first thing to ask yourself is, what kind of field service are you going to get for this drive? Does this company do mission critical applications? When I was the director of engineering for a large steel company, if we had a motor like this go down, it would cost us $100,000 an hour while we had it down. So this is a mission critical application. Many applications, you simply can't have a pump or a motor down. And those are the kind of companies that you want to work with, companies that have experience and know how to do things in mission critical applications. For example, in integrated steel mills. How many full qualified service techs are there in your area? Do they have true 24-7 support? When you call, who answers the phone? And how long does it take you to get a tech? You may wonder what happens when you get a hold of that tech. Is the first question going to be, we need a PO? Or is the tech going to be willing to talk to you and help? Does that drive have remote diagnostics capability and the techs have the ability to tie into the drive remotely and help you troubleshoot remotely without having to schedule a service call? 
How qualified are the service techs? Do they service all kinds of products from that manufacturer, or are they full-time, medium-voltage service techs? How experienced are the service techs? Are the techs engineers? Are they focused on medium-voltage drives, or do they do many other things? And does that company offer to train your people so that you have some ability to do troubleshooting for your own drive? In the end, it comes down to the three rules of field service. Just like the three rules of real estate, location, 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 the three rules of a medium voltage drive could be service, service, and service. So let's summarize the 10 points of evaluating and choosing a medium voltage variable frequency drive. Number one, the application. Number two, the motor and system voltage. Number three, the isolation transformer. Four, power quality. Five, motor waveform. Six, manufacture. Seven, conservative design. Eight, reliability. Nine, engineering support. And 10, field service. Be sure to check out our website at bfds.com and our YouTube channel for other educational videos. Or feel free to call us with your questions about medium voltage variable frequency drives.